What is up? What's going on, folks? Welcome and join me. Thank you for joining me on the Gospel Truth. I'm your host, Marla Wilson, and we have another exciting one, man. Another exciting one, another great discussion schedule for everyone out there. Um, and I got my dude Sam Shimon on with Mr. Kwaku L. And uh, if you don't know these two guys, man, I don't know where you've been. Man, Sam Shimon just came on and threw the smackdown on some Unitarians. And uh, he did his thing. And Mr. Quaku L, hey, Quaku L, man, I reached out to Quaku maybe about, you know, three months ago, I think. It's been a while, man. And uh, Quaku hit me up like a month later. Can you believe it? My man's busy, man. I guess he's busy, busy man. But he hit me up a month later and said, yeah, he'll do it. So he came on. I hooked him up with Mr. Sam Shimon. And they here today, or tonight, should I say. So, once again, I thank those two fellas for coming on this episode, but I want to thank you the most. Thank you for supporting the the Gospel Truth. If you are checking out the page, we just reached a thousand subscribers. So, thank you for your support. Thank you for just taking your time out your schedules to join the Gospel Truth uh, and and jump on this this train, all right? Um, Before I bring these fellas in, I do want to go ahead and encourage you to like and follow the Gospel Truth on Facebook and YouTube. Just get that subscription number up. Um, Also, if you can go ahead and jump over to the podcast. There's all this information is on the podcast. All this uh, content is on podcasts. I'm on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, all those major platforms for podcasts. And, um, you know, please support. Continue to support. I appreciate you for doing that. Um, Also, let me go ahead and go over a couple of upcoming shows that are coming up on the Gospel Truth. Coming April 14, 2020, I have Mr. LJ, Unitarian, he'll be debating Robert Rowe, a Trinitarian, and they're going to be debating what God seen in the Old Testament. That's going to be an interesting one, so be on the lookout for that one. Then coming up after that, I got Daniel Allgood, a, a cessationist versus Cole Perkins, a continuationist. And they're going to debate, does the Bible teach cessationism? Um, April 17, 2020 at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I have Mr. Uh, Dr. Stephen Boyce. He's going to be coming on. We're going to be discussing the, the biblical text, right? The canon of the Bible and how the canon was accepted as divine. All right. I love these textual conversations, these, these conversations about the canon. I love these kind of conversations. I don't think they get talked about enough, but he's going to be jumping on with me April 20th, at 20, uh, April 20th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. <clears throat> and then lastly, I have uh, uh, some female interlocutors. We don't see a lot of the females jumping into the into the the, the terror dome, if you will, right? <laughs> Doing the debates. But I got uh, Caroline Moore, and she's going to be going up against Shannon Q, and they're going to have a discussion: Is objective morality consistent with our reality? Uh, that's coming up April twenty fourth, twenty twenty, at six p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So once again, that's just the next four shows coming up on the Gospel Truth. Uh, make sure that you don't hesitate in. Um, and checking out what the gospel truth is doing jump over to the YouTube page if you want to see all the updated shows all the shows that are coming up uh, Let me bump my audio up, up a little bit. It looks like I'm a little bit low, but uh, just make sure you jump on there and uh, Check out the YouTube page get all the updates see what all the shows that are coming up. All right uh, with that said I do want to bring these two fellas in and let these guys introduce themselves What is going on fellas? How y'all doing? Super good. Good, good. All right. All right. Hey, Sam, yeah, I saw, I, hey, Sam, I saw you bobbing your head to the beat, man. The beat was I, dope, huh? I hear that. See, what your man got to do with me now. <laughs> That's pre-Christian days, brother. Pre-Christian days. I hear you, man. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff, good we stuff. Wow. Now. Thank you, guys. We don't do that. <laughs> Thank you both for joining me on this episode of Gospel Truth, man. You know, with this whole quarantine thing going on, man, we're taking this time out to go ahead and jump on here. I appreciate y'all. So before we jump into this discussion, um, well, the discussion is about Joseph Smith. Was or is Joseph Smith a prophet? So we're going to be talking about that. Um, before we jump into that, though, I do want to go ahead and give you guys a chance to introduce yourself to the audience that don't know you. Uh, Sam, if you don't mind, go ahead and give a quick introduction to yourself. Yeah, I just wanted to know something. You know, What's they that? say the camera adds like 10 pounds. What's there, 50 cameras on me, bro? What's going on? <laughs> I, I'm think gonna, I, th- yeah. <laughs> I think you're going to slim down a little bit, man. It might be the camera the camera position, man. Right. you good, man. <laughs> yeah, well, most people know my background. I started debating Muslims, and 
the 90s and went into full-time ministry in 1999. But engaging with Muslims, they brought up various objections against the Trinity, the authority of Scripture, and a variety of topics, some of which will dovetail with our discussion with Quaku and Mormonism. And so that's what I've been doing since 1999, trying to serve the triune God faithfully by the grace of the Holy Spirit and demonstrate the Bible has been preserved and that the true God is triune. And any doctrine that goes against the triunity of God is a doctrine of, the, of demons, of the devil. So we'll see how this discussion goes, trusting the Holy Spirit to anoint me for the glory of Jesus. All right, all right. All right, next up, Kwaku, man. Go ahead and give a quick introduction to yourself. Yes, so uh, my name is Kwaku. Um, I am a Latter-day Saint YouTuber. So my channel is just called Kwaku. You just type in Kwaku and it appears. Um, I preach the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, I believe that we're in some very interesting times and we're trying to prepare the world for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so we want everyone out there to know about the truth, to know about the restored gospel, to know who Jesus Christ is, to know why you're here, where you came from and where you're going and who you can trust in. And so that's my goal in line. I use a lot of humor when I do it too. My audience is mostly college students and high schoolers, but it seems to be expanding in demographics every day. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm here, trying to preach the truth, let everyone know about the restored gospel and the doctrines contained in the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price, and today testifying that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God and was chosen by Jesus Christ literally to be his servant and an apostle of him in these last days. All right, all right. Thank you both once again for joining me on this Mark, episode. Can I question? What's just up, what's up, question. Sam? I want to know, uh, because I'm just uh, meeting this man for the first time, What? why your last name is L, E-L? Just curious, because I saw it on the screen. It says Kwaku L, E-L. What's the yes. L part stand for? I'm just curious. L. That's just my last name. It's just E-L. Oh, okay. Because it's, yeah. uh, ironically, that's one of the Hebrew names for God. That's why I was asking. I didn't know. That's why I was just, just asking. Yeah. You know. yeah. Yeah. Not a normal Mormon name. I guess in Ghana, there are a lot of Latter-day Saints, but... In Utah, I'm probably there's maybe two Quakus, <laughs> one the other guy, and then me. That's about it. All right, all right. Good question. That guess that, that counts as the first question, now, Sam. <laughs> I guess so. You can take then you can take like thirty seconds off my time. Then. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff, fellas. So obviously the topic is yeah, you know, uh, was Joseph Smith a prophet? Is Joseph Smith a prophet? And I, I expect this one to be a really, really good discussion, man. You know, so we're going to jump into this quick format. So we're going to give you about 10 minutes to go ahead and, and throw your position out there, uh, give a quick opening statement. And then we're going to have about a 60 minute discussion between you two. I will not interject unless I hear some ad hominems thrown around or I hear the conversation is veering off target. Other than that, you won't worry about me jumping in. After that, we have about a five, 10 minute closing. We're closing remarks and then we have Q and A from the audience. Is that good? Sure. Yes. Good. All right. All right, uh, Mr. Kwaku, if you don't mind going ahead and giving a quick opening statement uh, of your of your position, man. Right. So um, there is an urgency in the current cultural battle among Westerners. We are losing our religious identity. College campuses across America are increasingly secularist, secular, mm -hmm. and atheistic. Our mainstream media pushes an atheistic agenda in music and in film. You know, we're in a battle of ideology and morality. My generation, Generation Z, increasingly feels that mainstream Christianity is unable to answer the tough questions. My generation overwhelmingly feels as if religious statements and philosophical debate fall flat. As mainstream Christianity strengthens its academia, it loses its people. Whether the subject is about the suffering of man, the fallibility of scripture, or the specificity of heaven, mainstream Christianity seems to offer general, vague, emotional statements that lack any exhaustive answers that stand up to muster. And with all sensitivity and respect to those who do adhere to mainstream Christianity, the reality is those answers are lacking and people are fleeing because mainstream Christianity is not true. Mainstream Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Zoroastrianism, Roman paganism, Celtic spiritualism, Egyptian theology, and ancient Sumerian religions all have one thing in common. They are ancient beliefs rooted in divine manifestations to the people of earth. Not, note the word ancient. Not one of them has a significant modern witness. To many people, the miraculous god of Zoroastrianism, Ahura Mazda, is silent today and ceases to work miracles. It is the same with the mainstream Christian reinvention of Yahweh. He was heavily involved in the affairs of man in both the Old and New Testament, 
speaking with prophets, sending angels, and more. Mainstream Christianity, through the mouths of pastors, priests, ministers, and reverends, have effectively preached against modern miracles, alluded away from them, or have been unclear about whether they should come or not. Yet, in the spring of 1820, a world-changing event occurred. A young farm boy named Joseph Smith Jr. was appeared to in a grove of trees by God the Father and Jesus Christ and numerous angels. This divine council of prophetic selection often seen in the Bible occurred once again, ushering in the last dispensation to prepare the world for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Joseph learned that Christ's New Testament church was lost from the earth and that a great apostasy had occurred. God the Father and Jesus Christ were restoring the ancient order and the authoritative church on the earth. Not a reformation, but a restoration. After this, Joseph was appeared to by an angel named Moroni who lived on this continent long ago, and he was instructed to retrieve an ancient record on gold plates and translate them using the Urim and Thummim by the gift and power of God. Three witnesses saw these golden plates, physically held them in their hands, and saw the angel with their literal eyes. Eight more witnesses saw and held the plates. The restoration of the gospel began with one witness of the divine and continued with many. This gives great context to John's vision in Revelation 14, as he beautifully records, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Joseph received the Aaronic priesthood when John the Baptist as an angelic being came down from heaven and laid his hands upon the heads of Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery. Afterward, Peter, James, and John of the New Testament laid their literal, physical, angelic hands on the heads of Joseph and Oliver and ordained them to the Melchizedek priesthood. At this time, they were made apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. As Joseph's life continued, he was instructed by Jesus Christ and built the largest American-grown church ever. He restored the temple order with ordinances performed in thanksgiving of the atonement of Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane and on the cross of Calvary. God commanded Joseph to restore more scriptures lost from the world and write down the revelation and divine appearances. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was established by God, the, the Father, and His Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, eventually, persecution and murder by the hands of mainstream Christians drove the church out of America. The prophet Brigham Young, Joseph's successor, led the Latter-day Saints to the land we now call Utah and helped the western side of America be established. What started with a young boy in a grove of trees is now one of the most powerful religions in the world. The Lord's church and his temples dot the globe, and his Latter-day Saints are preparing the world for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because of the Book of Mormon, we know Joseph Smith is a prophet. Many people like to compare Joseph's doctrines about heaven and salvation to mainstream Christianity's view of those things. However, if the Book of Mormon is true, mainstream Christianity isn't. As opposed to comparing Joseph's post-Book of Mormon teachings with mainstream Christianity, we look to see if the Book of Mormon is true. If it is, all presuppositions coming from mainstream Christianity are mute because their teachings come from the great apostasy. So people will go to Christian cons some people will go to Christian conspiracy theory websites and list supposed false prophecies of Joseph Smith, usually done by removing context, altering quotes, or just lying about the historical record. Having personally looked into these supposed false prophecies, I can state with honesty, Brother Joseph never had one false prophecy, not one ever. Never mind that Doctrine and Covenants 87 is an undeniably clear prophecy of the American Civil War 30 years before it occurred. Never mind that Joseph Smith's revelation in the Book of Moses and the Book of Abraham fulfilled prophecies of the Book of Enoch and ancient Abrahamic lore and theology Joseph didn't know about. Never mind the fact that Joseph's prophecies have come true with clarity and exactness, as opposed to the Nostradamus-type vague predictions people peddle online. The debate on Joseph Smith's prophetic reliability is first on the nature of the Book of Mormon. Everything else takes a back seat, and I'm eager to proclaim that the Book of Mormon is true. It is a spiritually enlightening, theologically accurate, geographically evidential record of truth. To quote Second Nephi chapter 33 of the Book of Mormon, And now, my beloved brethren, and also Jew, and all ye ends of the earth, hearken unto these words, and believe in Christ. And if ye believe not in these words, believe in Christ. And if ye shall believe in Christ, ye will believe in these words, for they are the words of Christ. And he hath given them unto me, and they teach all men that they should do good. And if they are not the words of Christ, judge ye. For Christ will show unto you with great power and great glory that they are his words at the last day. And you and I shall stand face to face before his bar, and ye shall know that I have been commanded of him to write these things, notwithstanding my weakness. 
And I pray the Father in the name of Christ that many of us, if not all, may be saved in his kingdom at that great and last day, unquote. All true believers in Jesus Christ will affirm the Book of Mormon, if not in this life, then at the judgment bar of God. I'll end with my testimony that Jesus Christ is our literal and actual savior, that his New Testament church has been reestablished on earth. I know that Jesus Christ is the redeemer of man. I know he called Joseph Smith to be his servant. This is the truth to outshine all religionists. It is God's direction in his kingdom. Thank you. All right, thank you, Sam. Uh, I call you Sam. Thank you, Kwaku. I appreciate you for that opening statement. All right, Sam, you got it for 10 minutes. All right. <clears throat> Praise be the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I ask the Holy Spirit to fill me, to glorify Jesus, and expose all false prophets and false teachings that seek to usurp the glory of Jesus and his word, the Holy Bible, in Jesus' name. Now, what you just heard from Kwaku is a series of assertions that I hear Muslims make all the time. Everything he said about Joseph Smith, they say about Muhammad. Muhammad made prophecies that were fulfilled. Muhammad's message is consistent with the true revelation that came before him, etc., etc., etc. Ironically, Muslims are actually closer to Christians than Mormons because Mormons are, for all intents and purposes, polytheists and idolaters, as I'm going to seek to demonstrate. But let me grant just one argument that Quaco made. Let's assume, let's assume that Joseph Smith made a <clears throat> true prophecy. That still is not a basis to assume that he's a true prophet because in Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 to 5, Deuteronomy 13, verses 1 to 5, we're told that if a dreamer of dreams or a prophet says that something will take place, and it takes place, and but then says, come, let us worship gods that you have not known. Do not do it, for the Lord your God is testing you. So all this proves is that Satan empowered Joseph Smith to say something that came true in order to misle mislead people like Kwaku in following a false god and reject the true God revealed in Scripture. But Kwaku's battle is not with me. Kwaku's battle is with his own prophet, Joseph Smith. Because if you read the Book of Mormon, because he appealed to the Book of Mormon, and so now he's stuck with it, because my citations will come from the Book of Mormon. And I want you to be leery of words being misinterpreted or redefined or twisted in order to avoid the plain reading of the passages. For example, was Joseph Smith a polytheist? Was he a Trinitarian? Or was he a modalist? Well, it depends which source you read. If I read, for example, the Book of Mormon, Mosiah, chapter 15, verses 1 to 4, surprise, surprise, Joseph Smith was a modalist heretic who thought that Jesus is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Here, let me give you the quotes. Mosiah, chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. And now, Abinadi, excuse me for butchering these names, I would that ye should understand that God himself shall come down among the children of men and shall redeem his people. And because he dwelleth in the flesh, he shall be called the Son of God. And having subjected the flesh to the will of the Father, being the Father and the Son. And then going on, thus becoming the Father and Son, they are one God, yea, the very eternal Father of heaven and of earth. Here's another one, Messiah 16, verse 15. Teach them that redemption cometh through Christ the Lord, who is the very eternal Father. Now, I hope Kwaku brings up Isaiah 9, 6, and try to justify what Joseph Smith said. So I'm inviting him, please bring up Isaiah 9, 6, because we're going to have a fun with Isaiah 9, 6. But with that said, Helaman 14, verse 12. Again, excuse my butchering of these names. I'm not familiar with these names because I don't believe the Book of Mormon any more than I believe the Book of, uh, of Muhammad, the Quran. Helaman 14, verse 12. And also that ye might know of the coming of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of heaven and earth, Oh, this one's even better. Ether, chapter 3, verses 14 and 16. Behold, I am he who prepared from the foundation of the world to redeem my people. Behold, I am Jesus Christ. I am the Father and the Son. I'm repeat it again because there's no tap dancing away from the plain reading of these passages. Like I said, be alert to people who are going to have to misinterpret, reinterpret, or twist the plain language of the texts. I am the Father and the Son. Now, again, Ether 4, 7 to 12. Let's see what it says about the so-called true Jesus that appeared to Joseph Smith. <clears throat> Saying, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of the heavens and of the earth. Ether 4, 7 and 12. Now, I can go on and on, but let me quote a few more. Because then we have passages where Jesus is not the Father, but he's distinct from the Father, praying to the Father, either because he is distinct from the Father as later, Writings of Joseph Smith intimate, 
and later so-called prophets taught, or it's simply a different manifestation of the Father. So you have two manifestations engaging in dialogue, hence the heresy of modalism. Now this is a very lengthy quote, 3rd Nephi, chapter 11, verses 6 to 10, 13 to 14, verse 27, and verses 32, 35, 36. Very long, I know, but let me just read the relevant parts. And here we have the context because I'm pressed for time. I'm trying to get in as much passages as possible. Now here, Jesus is boldly speaking, that I'm the God of Israel and the God of the whole earth and have been slain for the sins of the world. And after this manner, you shall baptize in my name. For behold, verily I say unto you that the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are one. And I bear record of the Father and the Father beareth record of me and the Holy Ghost beareth record of the Father and me. Sounds Trinitarian here. But then he says he is the Father, and I am the Father and the Son. And then we go into the issue, is the God of Mormon a man who then evolved into God, or has he always been God, immutably so, <clears throat> unchangeably so? Well, again, it depends on what writings of Joseph Smith <clears throat> you choose to focus on. For example, here from Doctrines and Covenants, 20 verse, uh, chapter 20, verse 17. By these things we know that there's a God in heaven who is infinite and eternal. eternal. Pay attention to how these words are going to be reinterpreted, redefined, to explain away the plain reading of these statements. Who is infinite and eternal, from everlasting to everlasting, the same unchangeable God. Moroni, chapter 8, verse 18. For I know that God is not a partial God, neither a changeable being, neither a changeable being, but he is unchangeable from all eternity to all eternity. So it's not that he evolved and became immutable. He's been immutable, immutable from eternity past to eternity future. But again, language doesn't mean what language says. This too will be redefined and explained away to agree with his later perversion of earlier Mormon doctrine. Moroni chapter 7 verse 22. For behold, God knoweth all things. Being from everlasting to everlasting. Oh, wow. Sure sounds orthodox. But then when we read other statements of Joseph Smith, not only does he stand condemned by his own false book, but by the Bible, correctly interpreted. And that's where we're going to have fun in our discussion. Mosiah chapter 3, verse 5. Mosiah chapter 3, verse 5. For behold, the time cometh and is not far distant. With power, the Lord omnipotent who reigneth, who was, is from all eternity to all eternity. If language has any meaning, this clearly teaches that this is not a man who became God, but one who has been God in eternity past with no beginning in sight and will continue to be God with no end in the future. Just like he's God eternally in the future, he must have been God eternally in the past. That's the plain reading of these statements from the Book of Mormon. Alma chapter 13 verse 7. This high priest, being after the order of his son, which order was from the foundation of the world, or in other words, being without beginning of days or end of years, being prepared from eternity to all eternity. No beginning of days, no end of years, from eternity to eternity. Just like Quaker will not deny, he is God for all eternity. But the text says he was also God for all eternity past. You can't have one without the other. Now again, it's not because I believe in the Book of Mormon. What I'm trying to show is that the Mo Book of Mormon itself and statements in the doctrines of and covenants contradict the later statements of joseph smith later statements of false prophets that claim to be shepherds of christ's flock there is no restoration it's a distortion so joseph smith not only contradicts the bible he contradicts joseph smith and here's what's interesting in the joseph smith translation of the bible luke 10 23 even though it's supposed to be luke 10 22 the joseph smith translation of the bible all things are delivered to me of my Father. No man knoweth that the Son is the Father, and the Father is the Son. But go read Luke 20, 10, 22, folks. That's not what it says. No man knoweth the Son except the Father. No man knoweth the Father except the Son, and to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. But I assume that's one of those restoration that the text was corrupted and Joseph Smith had to restore it. But Joseph Smith restored in such a way, we end up with modalism. Jesus is saying, the Father is the Son and the Son is the Father. What a wonderful restoration. Thank you, Joseph Smith, for showing up on the face of the earth because we would have been lost without you. But now let's read Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, Neareth, ne neither knoweth any man, the Father, save the Son, and they to whom the Son will reveal him. But here's what's interesting. Notice what he adds because he's restoring. He's restoring 
the truth that's been corrupted in the Bible, which is an argument that all cultists and heretics have to say. Muslims say your Bible's corrupt. Why? Because if the Bible wasn't corrupt, it would agree with Islam. But the Mormons are telling me if it wasn't corrupt, it would agree with Joseph Smith. See, all cults, all cultists have to attack the Bible to prove their false prophet is not an agent of the devil. They shall see the Father also. Folks, pick up any translation, look at any manuscript in any language of Matthew 11, which is supposed to be 27, but for some reason the versification is different. It doesn't say they shall see the Father also. Now, I don't have a problem with that. What I'm saying is here's a man who claims to be restoring, like Charles says Russell, Russell was restoring, like Muhammad was restoring. All these cult leaders and false prophets have this in common. The Bible's corrupt. We need to restore it, and we need to tell you what the Bible says. Otherwise, you're lost because there was no hope until God created X, Y, and Z. See, the Christians were lost until Muhammad. But the Mormons say, no, 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 no. The Christians were lost until Joseph Smith. And what an honor that God has given us, Joseph Smith, who's done more for us than Jesus himself. Utter blasphemy, exposing that the spirit that spoke to this man was the spirit of Antichrist, not the true Holy Spirit of the living God. How much time I got, Marlon? You have about one minute left. Oh, my man, you my man. But now, here's the problem. We got problems, Kwaku. And we're going to have fun discussing this tonight, my friend, my brother in humanity. The same Joseph man goes on and contradicts himself. Because here we have another statement that says, God himself was once as we are now and is an exalted man. No, Joseph Smith, that's not what you said in the Book of Mormon. I don't care how many <clears throat> attempts of spinning your words, reinterpreting your words, your words are plain. He wasn't a man. And I'm going to challenge Kwaku. Can you show me in the Book of Mormon where he says God was a man and he became God? Can you show me? You can't. So what you're going to need to do is explain it away, reinterpret it to make it fit. Because a clear, sure sign of a false prophet, he speaks out of both sides of his mouth. And that's what Joseph Smith did. This agent of the devil, a perverter, not a restorer of the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you. All right. Thank you both for your opening statements. Appreciate you giving those wonderful clarifications of your position. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and go to a 60-minute discussion between you two. Once again, I won't be stepping in until, unless I see ad hominins or red herrings. We're totally venturing okay, off the, the conversation. Let's stay central on this subject. All right. Um, other than that, you won't hear my voice. You won't see me until the end of the discussion. And audience, as you are hearing this, this uh, hearing and watching, if you're watching on YouTube and Facebook, uh, make sure you get those questions in. I have like two questions. I want to get a whole bunch of questions in. You know, I want to drill these two guys, man. I want to hit them hard, though. <laughs> but good stuff. So I'll ask the first question just to get the conversation going. Uh, let me stop my clock real quick. By the way, Marlon, who's going to be doing? Just curiously, who's going to be asking the first set of questions, me or him? He's going to ask of me or I'm going to ask of him? Um, I guess uh, Quaker, you can start, and then we can progress through the discussion as, 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 it, as okay. it flows, right? So, oh, so um, it's not 10 minutes. I'm no, sorry, no, no, it's, it's just a it's just a discussion. 60 minute conversation okay, between perfect. you two. All right. So first question. Kwaku. Yeah. Yeah. What's, so, what's, um, go ahead. Go for it, Kwaku. <laughs> before, before I ask any specific question, I just want to make clear um uh th there's a very big generational difference here, right? I'm not saying she, Sam is old, but you know, and so because of that, I just want to make clear um yeah. I don't want this discussion to be using words like cultist or cult or anything like that. Um, yeah, yeah. That isn't, it isn't helpful. It brings a spirit of darkness. And this is not going to be like the normal debates you see where it's like yelling back and forth. Oh, you know, you're a cultist. You're wrong of the devil. It doesn't, it's not helpful. And it kind of veers everything off track. So I, I, I well, if those I words are used that? in that sort of thing, I won't be able to do this. So I think we can both make okay. it more professional and friendly that way. So yeah, can I comment first... on that real quick? No, before you ask a question, you made a statement. Let me comment. Because I don't want you to leave the discussion and engage me, out of respect for you, not for Joseph Smith, I'll refrain from the language. But to call someone a cultist or a false prophet, that's thoroughly biblical. So I'm being, being faithful to the scriptures and how the prophets and the apostles addressed false teachers and those who perverted doctrine. But you just said you won't do this. So not to give you an excuse to leave, I'll refrain from that. But please do not tell me how to address a man who claims to restore a gospel that hasn't been dis uh, distorted 
and that's the discussion. But for the sake that you stay and not leave, I'll refrain because I don't want you to leave. I want you to engage me. So again, go ahead. Perfect. So um, my first question is, you know, you talked about the Joseph's translation of the Bible. You read a bunch of verses of the Book of Mormon. Um, we can sort of talk about either of them, but I wanted to ask you first, um, when was the Joe Smith translation of the Bible completed? Off the top of my head, I can't tell you, but that's irrelevant. Well, um, it, it actually was never completed. Um, yeah. So you're speaking about it as if it was so a correction. Can I there, though? Hold on, let me but, interject there. Whether it's completed or not, the passages I cited, is it from that translation or no? Well, you're citing them as if it's actually a correction. But the no, Joseph not, translation correction. of the Bible never claimed to be a correction. Um, no, no, I didn't say it was. Let me correct you again. You're misrepresenting me, and that's not going to get far in this discussion. Don't misrepresent me. I said what is stated is a distortion of what's found in Luke and Matthew. Luke and Matthew do not read the way the Joseph Smith translation says. So please don't put words in my mouth. I'm going to correct you before you do so. So now uh, answer my question. Did what I quote, let me, well, hold on. What I quoted, is it in the Joseph Smith translation, yes or no? Uh, yes, it is. It is in the Joseph Smith translation. However, the, the way you... You were speaking about translation. You were using these words as if the Joe Smith translation said it was a correction. And in fact, um, it didn't claim to be. Um, our church, the Church okay, of Jesus Christ, Christ 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 So what is the Joseph Smith translation? Bible. Um, okay, let's try this and, again, because you're going on a tangent. Kwaku, be patient. You're going on a tangent. I'm going to correct you along the way. He is quoting Luke and Matthew. When you change what's Luke and Matthew, to have Jesus but say something that Matthew do not or let me finish the point. Kind of Bible, finish because you're, you're speaking as if it's a correction. However, he yeah, doesn't claim it, it is, to be. It and so you're saying, well, he's changing it. Many scholars actually read the JST and read it as more of Joseph Smith's personal study and understanding of what the Bible's saying. And so okay, for you to hold it up that. as an authoritative okay, doctor isn't really fair. It, it isn't representative okay, of what well, the JST is supposed to be. Let me go with that. Let me go with that. You just confirm my point. If that's simply his interpretation, his interpretation is modalistic. So you're still stuck with the problem. Please don't bring up these tangents and these red herrings. Focus on the issue. Those verses that I quoted, he said, people know the Father is the Son and the Son is the Father. So now you just admit that's his interpretation understanding. His interpretation is modalistic. So keep to the meat of the matter. Don't so get into I these. Don't say admit that because there. if you... Again, if you read, you understand the way the JST was com was completed. You discover that he's writing things and he's actually writing different ideas out. So when you look at the manuscripts of the JST, there's not actually a well. He's changing this to this. It seems more of I wonder if this could mean this or this or this. Um, and you actually have different copies of it. So you read the JST and you said it was a correction of the Bible. But that's just not accurate, and that's never what he claimed for it to be. And so can you show me where he says, Kweku, Kweku, can you show me where he said, I wonder if it's this and this. You're now adding to the words of a dead prophet, unless you have the ability to Google go back Institute in time and know his studies time. studies or the Interpreter Foundation. Show me where he says that. Show me where he says, I wonder if it means this. Quote your source. Don't give me your opinion, because I said so that's yeah, what so you're going to do. Ask you, have, you, have you ever heard of... Um, Maxwell Institute or BYU Studies or um, give me the, the man. Don't give me what later people said to try to get away from the problems he created for your church. See, this is well, my point. Later people, I said in those my actual organizations that come out of universities, and what they do is they can provide you with all the manuscripts, and they can actually give you a timeline of when things are written and commentary Cite on them. Where so where, so that's where to talk about those things. However, I can't talk about those things before I like finish my sentence. Um, yes, because go ahead, get, it, to, your, get to the meat of the matter. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I encourage all the people watching this to go to those websites Please. to look at those things to find the timeline of the JST. But presenting it as if it's a replacement of the Bible Wait, is totally this is accurate. the time to ask the opposite of okay, the history of the Get to your questions, don't pontificate because when you do that, you're going into damage control and it's not going to help you. Get to your so, questions. I, 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 I again, I. I <laughs> this is a. Uh, this has to be a positive experience. This can't be. Good. Your questions. I, so, I, 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 I'm still going to hold and press you that if the dialogue isn't respectful, this isn't going to happen. Um, with the Book of Mormon, how many 
Book of Mormon versus do you believe teach modalism or Trinitarianism? Irrelevant. I gave you enough to show he taught modalism. So don't ask me irrelevant questions. Deal with the evidence I gave you. In fact, I'm going to return the favor. Quote Sam, a verse yeah. from the Book of Mormon. If you don't answer my questions, this isn't going to happen. This needs to be a good debate. And I think you're just sort of bouncing around. Being so so I just ask, you can say, don't I'm not sure. Okay. So all right, guys. Okay. All right, guys. All right. So, 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 this is what we're going to do because it appears that the uh, free freestyle discussion is not not working out. So, I'm going to put 10 yeah. minute restrictions on it. So, what we're going to do? We're going to do a, we're going to, we're going to do we're probably about five minutes in. So, what we're going to do? Yeah. We're going to go ahead trans, uh, convert this into a 60 minute cross examination where both parties yeah, get 10 minute opportunities to ask questions. Um, those questions need to be direct. And if they require just a yes or no, let's answer them yes or no. If they require maybe a couple more words of clarification, let's allow it and not cut the person off. Remember, we yeah, want this dialogue to be solid. And we want uh, the audience, because it's a, a huge artist. It's probably my biggest show so far, just to be honest with you. Um, we want both, for, both people to be able to... Example. Go ahead. Brother, can I give you some? Can you have him stop telling me how to answer questions and threaten to leave if I don't answer the way he wants? Because okay. that's rude and that's that dominant. He doesn't tell the debater how to answer his questions. If he doesn't like my answers, he can refute them, but not keep threatening that he's going to walk away because that shows cowardice. And I'm trying to give him respect. Don't tell me how to answer your questions. You don't like my answers? Let the people judge whether I answered you correctly or I'm evading your questions. But this is not what you do. You don't dictate to someone the format of how to answer a question. All right. Well, I believe, so let's in, I believe in social literacy, and I believe if you don't have that, then nothing gets answered, and then nobody can walk away feeling enlightened or even feeling as if it was everyone here. Okay. Enlightened. Okay. Okay, okay, guys. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's I think that's a fair point. If he has a response that you are necessarily disagreeing with, Kwaku, go ahead and just you know challenge him on it. Continue to press him on it, um, yeah. uh, and let the conversation evolve organically out of that. Um, so. Um, with that said, we're gonna, I'm going to start your time over, Kwaku. So go ahead, and you have 10 minutes to go ahead and cross-examine now, Sam. So, yeah, my question remains, how many Book of Mormon verses do you believe allude to the Trinity or uh, modalism? Uh, enough to show that there are passages that talk about God in Trinitarian terms and also God in modalistic terms. Mm. So are you familiar with Latter-day Saint um, and belief on how Jesus Christ is the Father. If, if... No, I'm interested in Joseph Smith because the proposition of the debate was Joseph Smith. We we focused on the person of Joseph Smith Everything, and the yeah, theological. Yeah. Let me let me let me make my point. The debate is Joseph Smith, his theology, as well as whether his theology comports to the Bible. I'm aware what later so-called prophets. And the scholars of Mormonism have said, and I'm also aware of what Joseph Smith has said later on, but the focus was specifically on Joseph Smith. So I gave you the most authoritative source, the Book of Mormon. We can go into other sources, but the fact remains, this is what you have in the Book of Mormon. Now, if you can show a statement where he says that the father was a man who became God in the Book of Mormon, then bring it out so we can engage it. Bring that statement out for me so I can engage it. Okay, so I, I'll ask again, do you know um, what Joseph Smith taught and what Latter-day Saints currently believe is the doctrine of how Christ is the Father? Do you, Christ is the Father of blank. Could you fill in the blank? Yeah, well, I know that he contradicted himself and that you have statements in the Book of Mormon where he says, Jesus prays to the Father, assumption showing that he's not the Father. But then there are statements in the Book of Mormon, Jesus says, I am the Father and the Son. But then later statements... Jesus is not the Father. He is Jehovah, the Son of Elohim. And Elohim was a man who was exalted to God's status. But that's the whole point. He contradicts himself, proving he's a false prophet. Now, disprove me. So, I wouldn't say any of those are contradictions if you understand the context and more of what was written. Um, okay, give but me again, the context. Ask, Jesus is the Father of blank, according to Joseph Smith. Can you show me in any of the statements I cited where he made that qualification? I'm going to show you a lot of statements. I'm asking you first to see if you've done some Please of the research to fill in the book. Give it Jesus, to me. Give me from the book of Mormon. I'm waiting for you. From the book of Mormon, show me where he no, qualified. So I'm not what he you, so I'd like you to answer the question. Jesus is the father of answer. blank. If you don't know, it's fine to say I don't know. I just I'm asking you if you if 
but according to Joseph Smith and Latter Day Saint doctrine, Jesus is what the I Father. Quoted, of God. Please believe. No, what I quoted it says here. Let me show you what he did say. Okay, let me just go back to him. Behold, I am He who was prepared from the foundation world to redeem my people. Behold, I am Jesus Christ. I am the Father and the Son. Okay, so now <clears throat> I am the God of Israel. And the God of the whole earth, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are one. And he doesn't even specify the kind of oneness. Right, right but he obviously there's more than one quote about Jesus being the Father. You, you can rely on one quote. You can look at the plethora. I'm not seeing the authoritative now, quickly, quickly, words of that. Just, Jesus is the Father you're of the plan. Okay, Kweku, you're not, you're not yeah, helping yeah, let's, me. Okay, let me yeah, go. let's allow him to respond, uh, Kweku. Yeah. You're not solving the dilemma for your case because I started my statements by saying, Joseph Smith contradicts himself in the Book of Mormon and later statements. So if you want to harmonize them, give me your best so we can see whether your harmonization is a desperate spin or is it faithful to the context. The statements I, I quoted do not qualify <laughs> in what sense Jesus is the Father. Now give so me I'm a statement. I'm not presenting something for Alan this round because I'm asking the questions. I'm cross-examining you right now. So again, and I'm asking I'm you. We can talk about supposed contradictions and all those things, but the first question yeah. I've asked, and I'm repeating it till I get an answer, according to Joseph Smith and Latter-day Saint doctrine, Jesus is the father of blank. Please fill in the blank. According to Joseph Smith in the Book of Mormon, he doesn't make such qualification. And maybe it's there. Prove me wrong. I'm not a scholar. Go ahead. Show me where he makes that qualification in the Book of Mormon. But I'm asking, do you not know? It's okay. I would just like a simple answer. Give me from the book I've been saying. Show me from the Book of Mormon the qualification. Educate me. I'm here it's to great, learn. great. You don't know. According to Latter-day Saint doctrine and Joseph Smith, overwhelmingly, Jesus is the father of our salvation. So he's the father of our salvation. And because quote. of that, I'm, I'm continuing to answer. Because of that, it makes all of those verses in context. You can find that all over the Book of Mormon. And no, actually, let's read quote. some of it. Let's no, read, no, no, let's read some quote. of it that talks about this differentiation between the Father and the Son. Third Nephi 1923 quote, says, And now, Father, I pray unto thee for them, and also for all those who shall believe on their words, that they may believe in me, that I may be in them as thou, Father, art in me. Yeah. Behold, I have that I am in my discussion. Christ, Nephi, yeah. the Son of God. I created the heavens and the earth, and all things that in them are. I was with the Father from the beginning. I am in the Father, and the Father in me. These verses give a now? lot of context on the sort of poetic language of father, son, father, right. son. But in great context, you can see more of these things. And that's important to understand if you want to have a discussion on the you Book can, of Mormon, a divinity, and who controls the heavens. Marlon, this guy's going to let me answer his, his. He's giving his statements and preaching again. Can I answer you now? Can I answer you? I actually have that in my paper showing the contradiction in the Book of Mormon because that's an example of the Trinity in the Book of Mormon. So you're not listening. You think you're listening to my case. You're only confirming my case. Even in what you cited, that's not a qualification, the qualification you made. That's why you keep saying, Joseph Smith, Latter-day Saints. What you cited was a Trinitarian passage. It's in my file that I prepared to show that the Book of Mormon contradicts itself because in one place, Jesus is not the Father. I even said that in my opening speech. Other places, he is the Father. And at best, what you cited, even a modalist would quote that because that's simply mimicking yeah. the high priestly prayer of Jesus. If you grab Let random verses, you can always pull them out of context. However, okay. if you read you them have all yet in context, to so another, another context. Great. So another one of those um, verses that you were describing um, is in Third Nephi chapter 28. Um, mm -hmm. And so it says this, And for this cause ye shall have a fullness of joy, and ye shall sit down in the kingdom of my Father. Yea, your joy shall be full, even as the Father hath given me fullness of joy, and ye shall be even as I am. And this is the Lord speaking to his disciples. Now, those words, ye shall sit down in the kingdom of my Father, yet your joy shall be full, even as the Father hath given me fullness of joy. These are two very important things to juxtapose. Because the fullness of joy and becoming like the Father is the same gift let's, the Son gives to the people. Let's make, sure we're, let's make sure we're asking, let's make sure we're asking yeah, he's questions. Not, he's going into damage control mode because he knows there's... Yeah. One more not, insult till this is over. One more insult until this is over. Let, Okay, let's let's you keep it. Let's uh, come on, come on, come on, guys. You guys, let's 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 chill. I know, I know, we antsy to answer the questions or antsy to give a rebuttal, but we have to have a discourse, a conversation 
not only for YouTube, but also for the audience. The audience is complaining right now that you guys are talking about each other. Okay, yeah. you guys, so let's make sure that we don't go on a mono, uh, monologue. Let's make sure that we're dialoguing and we're asking questions. That's important. All right. Yeah, and Marlon, he hasn't. He's been going into these speeches because he's going to damage control. So let me address him because I quoted Third Nephi. Let me now quote Ether and show that he's not solving the tension and the contradiction. He's quoting one verse that smacks of Trinitarianism, but ignoring the other verses that smack of modalism. But in his mind, they're harmonious, and I'm not going to let him assume it's harmonious. He's going to have to prove it, and he hasn't. Now let me read Ether because I want everyone to hear what he said. Did you guys hear what he said? He's the father of our salvation. That's not what Ether said. Let me quote Ether chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Father of the heavens and of the earth, and all things that are in them are. The Father of the heavens and the earth and all things that are in them are. So yes, you can point to passages that seem to teach Trinitarianism, but you can point to other passages that smack of modalism, hence the contradiction. But then this contradicts later teaching that the father was a man who became God, slept with one of his spirit wives, and sire Jesus, because the citation gave you from the Book of Mormon, hey, Sam. God has been God. Hey, Sam, so, I just, Sam, I just think Quake, who, uh, I think he just left. Uh, I think okay. he just, I think he just left. Um, it's all right, let him leave, bro. It's okay, bro. It's let all me right. see. Let me see. Um, yeah, it looks like his screen froze up. It's okay. If he leaves, he leaves, bro. It's fine. Like I said, he's too young. He's not ready. Anyway. Yeah, well. That's okay, brother. Hey, man. This is going to be good. It's going to blow up your channel. I promise you. Let me see. Hold on one second. Don't be, hey, Marlon. Brother, don't be disappointed. This is going to be a blessing to you, man. It's going to blow up your channel. <laughs> I promise you. I really you want. I really wanted the discussion on. <laughs> I know. I wanted it too. But you see, he got nervous. Oh, he got nervous. But he kept going into speeches because he wasn't prepared for the honestly. He wasn't. Sorry, brother. It's okay. May God convict him to come. Oh man, Quake, who did you leave? I'm trying to get yeah, back yeah. in contact with him to see. Uh, see if I can get him back, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope it doesn't devolve into just we talking because it's going to be a waste of time, brother. Sorry. Maybe you can get a bona fide, qualified Mormon scholar, not a young man, because I know he's popular, but he's not qualified. And I'm not saying this, put him down. He's a young man. He's overzealous, and he's not qualified. Maybe if you want to get contact like a bona fide Mormon scholar, I'd love to do this. Uh, man. <laughs> Bro, I promise you, it's going to go viral. You don't understand how social media works. Wow, Quaker rant, and you're going to get like 10 million views. It's not <laughs> I promise you. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's okay, bro. We had a yeah, good time. He, he dipped. Uh, he got, he, he got out of Dodge. He got out of Dodge big time, man. Oh, yeah, man. Please don't take it down. Please don't take it down. Leave this up. Now, now, it'll stay up, but it's just, dang, I really wanted the conversation, though, Sam. You know, I, re I really wanted it, man. Um. Well, you know, I guess that's how some of it goes, God, man. man. Hey, brother, that's what happens when you prop a false prophet and blaspheme the triumph God. Our God lives. You know uh, that, my brother. Yeah, yeah. I love so, you, man. That's, I love you too, man. That's the truth. <laughs> hey, you know, now you know why people want to debate God. I'm not boasting. God crucify my flesh because I take no prisoners for the glory of the triumph God. Honestly, I don't. Mm. Because this is, brother, you and I know this is lives at stake. It's not a game. People's salvation is at stake. We're going yeah. to have to give an account for the blood of many. This is why I take it seriously with a passion. And by the grace of God, you and me, I know you can amen this, we're willing to die for Jesus, the mm -hmm. true Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because yeah. not a joke. We're not we're, we're this is about people's everlasting salvation. So yeah. yeah, he left though. He left and yeah, okay, he's right? he, he's not responding, so no, he's done. He's done. Yeah, That's okay, he's, bro. But I love you, man. He's probably done. I love you, man. It's all good, man. It's all good. It's all good. Sorry, folks. I don't know what to tell y'all. Uh, but it's all good, man. And um, 
You know, this is probably my first one on a show where somebody just cut the cord in the middle of the debate. This is the first. So um, this is interesting, man. Very interesting. So no, man, okay. I love you, man. Love you too, all right. man. Let it's all good. People, let me just let them know. I'm going live right after this on my channel. Guys, support Marlon. And I mean this from my heart. The man loves Jesus. Hit, uh, hit the like button. Subscribe. Make this man's channel go viral because he's bringing you the best debates possible. So support this man. I love this man from my heart. He's my brother. He worships the Trinity. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. All right, but, folks. So, hey, if y'all want a debrief of the de <laughs> of the debate discussion, go okay. ahead and head over to Sam Page, man. I'm sure he's going to go over yeah, some Rudy, stuff. I'm going to open it up, guys. Go so, there. Uh, God bless everyone. See y'all right. later. Actually, I think some people may have some questions uh, for you, okay. Sam. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, y'all got some questions. questions out there, man? I know somebody said Q and A with Sam. Uh, right. If you got yeah. a question for Sam, go ahead, and shoot him in here real quick. Uh, uh, let me see. Thank you, seeking the narrow way. I know you said you subscribed. Um, let me see who else. Uh, there was a question. Hold on, let me see. Perhaps you can ask these questions. A lot of your questions for Kwaku, but he bounced, so he can't answer them. Um, let me see. Yeah, these questions are for Kwaku. But there was somebody. I thought I saw a question. Yeah, guys, if you have questions oh, for me. Justin, I have a question from Justin Effler. Effler and he said, what, what books do you recommend on history of Joseph Smith? You know what? Excellent. You mentioned that. One of the best apologists. Let me get the book. He's one, Hey, hold on. Let me get the book. Sorry. Man. Let me get that book, brother. Hold on, guys. I just had it. I better find it. Or I'm going to be angry. Robert Bowman Jr., one of the top Trinitarian scholars and apologists, came out with a phenomenal book. Let me get it, man. I'm going to be upset if I can't find it. I'm going to be upset if I can't find it. Hold on. I'm just reading it right now. Okay. Right here. Robert, Robert Bowman Jr., here goes. Okay. Pray. I'm losing weight. I got to lose more. Right here. This book right here, Jesus' Resurrection and Joseph's Visions, Examining the Foundations of Christianity and Mormonism, Robert Bowman Jr., right here. Get this book that just came out. He gives an historical examination showing the overwhelming, massive evidence for the death and resurrection of Jesus, showing it is a historical fact. And then he shows the evidence exposes the fraud of Joseph Smith's first vision. Right here. Get it. And I promise you, you, that's all you need. I mean, there are other books. Believe it or not, James White, solid Trinitarian brother who loves the Lord, he's got some excellent books on Mormonism, right? Is the Mormon my brother? Right? Mm. But this one, get phenomenal. Um, I think I saw another question pop up here. Sam, will you now call yourself Waga Master? <laughs> Wag Wagu Ma Wagu Master? I don't know what oh, that yeah, this guy looks <laughs> uh where's another word uh there's somebody they're just popping up oh here go here go one ah oh, no that didn't come up like the way i wanted it to let me see yeah. hold up someone asked me about theistic evolution i don't know if that's relevant but it's up to you i don't know yeah that's yeah, not popping up for whatever reason but anyway, I'll read them real quick. It says, does Sam think that begotten that the begotten son of Psalms 2 and Hebrews 1 is about kingship of Christ at the resurrection? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's what it is. Psalm 2 and Hebrews 1 refers to Christ's coronation and enthronement after his resurrection and ascension into heaven. It's not about his essential deity, that he's the eternal son of God. Okay. All right. Let me see if a couple more questions. They're just popping in. Sam is trying to beef up on the Trinity. Do you have any? Oh, he says, Sam, I'm trying to beef up uh, from Mason G. Um, he's saying, yes. um, Sam, I'm trying to beef up on the Trinity. Do you have any recommendations? Yes. Let me give you, to start with, for those who are just coming into this, you must get, and the man has done some great work. It's amazing how much he's done in equipping the body of Christ. Get James White's Forgotten Trinity. One of the best yeah, small is. books written for beginning, intermediate level, and to the Trinity, it's meat. That's that's what I'm recommending because you're now coming into the doctrine of the Trinity. Second book, one that you can find on Amazon, I believe, 
get the book by Dr. Robert Morey, Trinity, Evidence and Issues. Start with those and then work your way up. When you're done with those, then there'll be other recommendations, but start with those two. Okay. Uh, question, did Joseph Smith believe that African Americans are cursed? Yes, he did, but they're gonna explain that away because there's a group of Israelites that when they fought and opposed God, he cursed them with black skin. Yeah, but yeah. hey, anything and everything can be explained away when you're convinced and deceived into thinking your religion is true. Hmm. Let me Muslims see. do that all the time, Mom, because Muslims look- they, the, Yeah, they do it, yeah, yeah, they do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me give you an example of what I mean. Muhammad, okay. the, the narration say Muhammad was a white man and he owned black slaves. It says black slaves, and he would sell black slaves and uh, exchange black slaves. It's in the Hadith, Bukhari, Muslim, all of it. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Just subscribe. Thank you for subscribing. Appreciate you. Uh, let me see if it's another one. They just popping up real fast. So I'm trying to keep up with them. Which one? Let me see. Cute. This. <laughs> Yeah, this I don't was, believe this was a self-conscious con man, demonized, but he knew he was a con man, a Freemason, and a con man, and a liar, and a thief. Yeah, yeah. Like someone asked me that. So. Okay, let me see. Let's see, let's see if I can get some more questions for you, Sam. Let me see, Bowman. We're talking about Rob Bowman. Let me see. See if there's any more. Let's see if there's any more popping up here. Uh, question. Oh, uh, here go one. Let me see. There it is. Doesn't Isaiah forty three ten annihilate Mormonism? You know the problem with that, brother, is that you have now a widespread belief in what's called the Divine Council. Now, let me recommend a man that I, and you know what, uh, Marlon, try to contact him, get him on your show. I'm sure he'll come. Michael S. Heiser. Michael, Michael S. S. Heiser. Heiser. Yeah. You know him, right? You I just bought it. Yeah, I just bought his book, uh, The Unseen Realm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you, that brother is a theological beast. He's okay. one of the best evangelical scholars, diehard Trinitarian, loves the Trinity, worships the Trinity, believes the Bible is the inspired word of God, infallible. But he has a view of the heavenly council in which the members of the council, truly gods of the lesser sort, created by Yahweh, Jehovah. So Jehovah created a host of lesser divine beings, right? They're not comparable to Jehovah. Jehovah created them. He gives them their power, their authority. He can wipe them out of existence. Jehovah alone is uncreated, almighty, all-knowing. So he would say that passages such as Isaiah 43, 10, do not deny the existence of lesser de deities. What it's saying is there is no God like Jehovah because this is where it gets a little tricky, and he's got a point. The Bible will often use terms such as no one, one and only, only, in context where it doesn't deny the existence of others who in some sense share that function or role. For example, it says no one is good, God alone is good. But then you're, you read Luke 1, and you go to Luke 1, 6, and it says, basically, you know, Elizabeth and her husband, they were good, they were righteous. So you have to understand what this language means and what it doesn't mean. So I don't think Isaiah 43, 10 would work with a Mormon who's sharp. Okay, okay. Uh, I have another one here. Uh, it says, uh, got someone else asked earlier, according to LDS, John the Apostle never died. So why did yeah. he not stop the great apostasy? Yeah, exactly. Louis, Louis Dizon is also a young man. Now, here's a young man that's a theological beast, Louis Dizon. He's young, very educated, very well-read, passionate about Jesus and the Trinity. He is a young man that I can say is a theological beast who loves the Lord, and he's young. I'm old enough to be his dad. Boy, am I old. Anyway, that's a good question for Kwaku to answer, but he's not here. Yep. How are you going to answer that? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let me see. These things popping up fast, man. Let me see. Yeah, the way my my thing that uh, it's like if you don't get to it right away, oh man. Let me <laughs> That's see. Fine, man. Let me see. It's somewhere on here. Where is it? It was a joke. 
I want to let you see. Somebody's telling you to stop flexing your chest muscles. <laughs> well, I'm because I've lost weight. I still got 50 to go, and I'm going to get there by the grace of Jesus. <laughs> as gorgeous and fine as Thomas, you beautiful. <laughs> Here goes, here's another question for you, Sam. It says, uh, at Shimonian, what are the similarities between Islam and Mormonism? Yeah, yeah that's a uh, precious system of the Lord. Well, I mean, both Muhammad and Joseph Smith claimed an angel appeared to them, right? Both of them supposedly confirmed the message of the prophets before them. Both of them claim that their scripture is authoritative and the lens through which you are to interpret the earlier revelations. And I mean, on and on goes, both were polygamists, right? And so on and so forth. There are a lot of similarities, but profound differences. And let me just say this. This is going to shock you guys. And I know Muslims are going to take this and make a clip. Muslims are closer to true biblical Christians than Mormons because Muslims do not believe in a man on some planet being exalted to Godhood who has then spiritual wives that he has actual sexual intercourse with to sire that is just as much blasphemy to the Muslim as it is to the Christian so ironically ironically shockingly a Muslim is closer to me in my theology about the nature of God than a Mormon I'm more comfortable with sitting with a Muslim and discussing about God than a Mormon with their very convoluted, perverted understanding of the nature of God and the plethora of gods and goddesses that exist. It's ironic, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Very, very, very. And here's a here's a funny one. They say, hey, Marlon, I'm worried people may mistake you for Kwaku, but I'm not convinced. <laughs> Oh, people got jokes, man. People got jokes. Where's another one, man? Uh, uh, hey, Marlon, for future debates, uh, realize people can't handle the heat, so you're going to have to get someone that – so be careful when you get me on, man. <laughs> all right, man. It's all good, man. It's all good. Get that fire going, man. It's all good, though. Let me see. Uh, let me see if there's any more. It says, that's true. Will you set up a debate between Sham Shimon and the, and the Muslim? I think I can. I think Sam is Anytime. down. I think Sam Anytime. is down. Let me just say that. I mean it from my heart. I truly mean this. I praise God for you, a soldier who loves Jesus, who's devoting his life to bringing people to the true God and his word, the Bible. I am your servant for the sake of Christ. You let me know. All right, Sam. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that gesture, man. Definitely, man. You know, I'm sure I can get some round up. I, try, I want to get you on with... Um, What's dude name? Uh, I forget his name. I'm not sure if you debated him. Uh, Muslim guy, scholar, or supposed scholar anyway. Shabir Ali? Yeah, Ali. Yep, Shabir oh, Ali. Ali. Yep. Ali. But here's the debate, because this guy is also another one of those guys. The yeah. debate will be, if you ask him, say, does the Quran teach Tawheed? That's one. And another mm -hmm. debate, does the Bible teach Trinity? He likes to combine two topics in one, so he doesn't defend his falsehood. Didn't he debate uh, Qureshi? Qureshi yeah. on uh, the, 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 ta the ta Tawheed. Yeah, Trinity and Tawheed. But the problem is that's what he does. He likes to put two co topics in one so he doesn't spend time defending his falsehood but attacking Trinity. See, it's easier to attack a position. It's a, it's it's different to defend a position. So I, I would want two debates with him. Does yeah. the Bible teach Trinity? Does the, the Quran teach Tawheed? And okay. I will do it tomorrow. God have God. have you ever have you ever discussed or had a debate with uh, Nizam Ghaffar? I'd love to debate him, too, on the deity of Christ and the Gospels, but I've challenged him. But he would. See, they all use the excuse, Sam to Shimon is too mean, too harsh, and we want Scott. This is an excuse because these are the same people when you go on their channels, mock mm -hmm. Christian, blaspheme yeah, the triumph of God, and Definitely. try and intimidate Christians. So that don't work. Mm -hmm. That that mm -hmm. game don't work. Put it aside, player. Play <laughs> on. Play. All right. Let me see if there's any more, anybody else. Let me see. See if there's any more questions from folks out there. So Sarah write it like, let me see. It's, apparently there's a question from, from Sarah. I, didn't see, I guess Sarah didn't answer the question. Ask the question. Um, all right, here's another question. And this is, who's the most formidable opponent you've ever faced? Uh, to be honest, and I, I, I want people to understand uh, this not coming from arrogance made the Lord crucify my flesh. None of them. I, I haven't been intimidated or impressed by any of them. I am my own worst critic. I, I don't worry about the guy I'm debating. I'm always worried about myself, and this is an honest confession. 
I always worry that the Lord will allow me to shame myself in order to keep me humble, to show me it's not about me winning arguments. It's about the Holy Spirit. He's the one who gets people saved. So I always fear whether the Holy Spirit will allow me to shame myself, to humble me, because whether I win a debate or not, Jesus is king. He's on the throne. He'll get people saved, whether I exist or not, whether I fail or succeed. So I, I, I'll be honest, I don't, I'm not intimidated by any of them. Okay. Uh, if it's the topics that I've spent time on, obviously, if you're going to ask me to debate on theistic evolution, no, because that's not my field. And I won't venture in a field that I'm not prepared because it's about the glory of Christ. It's not about my reputation. Got you. Got you. That makes sense. Makes sense, man. Um, yeah. And this one saying, King of Kings said, we should do more live sessions together. So you should Anytime. do more live sessions together. <laughs> Anytime. But when, when I learned how to work YouTube properly, I got some great mods, great brothers, sisters who helped me, like Protestant Believer. Yeah. He's the one who downloads videos and beatifies my. When I learn, I'm going to invite you to my channel and interview, but I'm still learning. I'm still okay. working my way around it. For sure, for sure, man. Uh, here going. I oh, just saw another one that said, let me see. Says gospel truth. Why did Walter Martin reject the eternal generation of the Son? Walter Martin believed in the Trinity, obviously. I mean, so I just want to be clear, so people don't misunderstand what's being said. Walter Martin was a diehard Trinitarian. He believed mm -hmm. three eternal divine persons that exist eternally as one God. He believed that sonship referred to the incarnation, that Jesus wasn't the Son before creation. He was the eternal Word, and sonship has to do with Him becoming flesh from his blessed mother as a virgin by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so from that moment on, he becomes God's son. He's always been God, eternally the word, who became son. Now, why did he reject it? I guess because he didn't see in the Bible. His reading of the Bible did not convince him that Jesus is the eternal son. So, But I can't, again, I can't psychoanalyze this brother. He's in glory with Jesus. He's alive mm -hmm. and he's pain-free and enjoying the presence of Christ. Yeah, Walter Martin is great, man. I think Walter Martin was probably the first outside of like, because when I first started getting into apologetics, I was like watching like Ken Ham, not Ken Ham, but um, yeah. was a, a Ken Hovine, Ken yeah, Hovine. Ken, so yeah. Ken, Ken Hovine is the one that lit the fire. And obviously I transitioned from his particular theology. I don't agree with his theology. He, he teaches some funny style stuff. He's a King James version only is then he has some interesting positions. Um, but I transitioned from that. But then I start watching Walter Martin, his old videos, Walter Martin, and how he used to go on the uh what's dude show? What's that dude show? He used to go on the John Ankerberg. Yeah, John Ankerberg, yeah. And we used to go on John Ankerberg and I used to watch him. He used to smash everybody. Yeah, Walter Martin was a straight beast, man. Yeah, he's so. a great man I got and let me say something, Marlon. People may not know this. Did you know William Lane Craig also doesn't believe in the eternal sonship of Christ? He's a social Trinitarian that believes there are three eternal persons, but he believes that the roles, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, are roles they took in respect to creation and salvation. Wow, interesting. I didn't know that. I did not. I yeah. didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I heard. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm about to read some of his papers on his on, on the Trinity then, because I listened to some of the podcasts of William Lane Craig's and his teaching of the Trinity, but I didn't really hear anything that was overly alarming. So I'm gonna have to yeah. go back. Maybe I missed it, but I'm gonna have yeah. to go back and, and listen again. Do a search on his uh, site. He has even, a, where he's answering question, he says that there are two positions and he takes that position where these are roles they took in respect to creation. And he's also what we call a Neo-Apollinarian because there was an ancient church father who believed that Christ's divine spirit, Christ as a spirit animated his human body, which was condemned because the church father said, no, he also has to have a true human spirit in order to redeem all of man. So because the, the argument was what Christ did not assume, he did not redeem. So if he doesn't have a human spirit, he doesn't redeem human spirits. So Apollinarius corrected himself. But Craig has now revived a modified version of it so that the soul that animates the human body of Jesus is the second person of the Trinity, that eternal soul that animates his body. So it's a not identical, but a revamped version of what Apollinarius was trying to get at. And that's why you have people, believe it or not, you have even Roman Catholic apologists that condemn him as a heretic for going against the creeds. Hmm. Wow. Yep. Interesting. Interesting stuff, yep. man. He's an interesting fellow. He is. Yeah, that's interesting. Great, great, great soldier. One of our best apologists who decimates atheism and proves yeah. that Jesus rose from the dead. 
Mm -hmm. But he's got some issues because of his commitment to trying to make faith sound reasonable and using philosophy to make it sound reasonable. Mm -hmm. he, he goes, in my estimation, and I'm not on his level, so it's not too far, right? That, you know, that's what I think. Hmm. It just goes to a, a, a tidbit too far. Hmm. Got you, got you, got you. Yeah, I don't see any more questions popping up here. Let me see. Let me see if I see any more questions from folks. Well, here's a here's a here's a. Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa, Nadir Ahmed, Farid. They're all jokes. They're a disgrace, hmm. and Muslims need to stop supporting them if they want non-Muslims to respect their religion and take them seriously because they are jokes. They are a disgrace to their religion. So I have no respect for them. All right. All right. I think that's all the questions, Sam. Um, I don't see any more popping up, more just statements. All right. Um, well, let them know right in 20 minutes. I'm on a live stream. So come join me in Jesus name. Okay. Okay. I think that's it, Sam. So, all right. But it's all good, and if y'all don't know, we are working on getting Sam, Anthony Rogers on, David Wood, and a surprise fourth guest. A, four, a surprise fourth guest. I don't know who it is, but it's going to be a fourth one. The Lord's going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. In, 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 in Jesus' name, we're going to make it happen, Sam. We're going to do our thing, man. Man, you but, make Bob look beautiful, you gorgeous-looking Christian hunk. <laughs> Oh, man, you're a trip, Sam. You're a trip, man. But it's all good. Thanks, Sam, man. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, man, I'm getting, I know you'll be back on at some point, man. So uh, appreciate you, man. Everybody, appreciate your time. Appreciate you subscribing, liking the whole nine. Go ahead and head over to Sam's channel so he can uh, give you a rundown, lowdown of what this Mormonism thing is. And uh, once again, thank you guys for viewing. Um, and Sam, thank you. Appreciate you, brother. Love you, brother. Lord bless you. See All right. You God bless. Take care.